Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white life gain and drain deck featuring the Sadistic Pilgrim as our commander, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two with the Death Touch, saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control we gain one life, and whenever another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life. So our deck both handles with these life gain themes, as well as cards that reward us for sacrificing creatures, and kind of paper cut style kill the opponent one point at a time. And then taking a look at our deck, I've split it up into a few different categories. Don't have a whole lot of ramp, just Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart as ramp artifacts, since we have a relatively low curve. We have a few removal spells, including Swords, which is just too good not to include in any white deck. And then Fatal Push at 1 mana, also have a ton of ways to enable Revolt by sacrificing our creatures. Then a Bone Shards and Spark Harvest require an extra sacrifice if we want to cast them for 1 mana. Feed the Swarm can also blow up opposing enchantments, and Rite of Oblivion also requires a sacrifice, can be flashed back for 4 mana, and then Cathar Commando can blow up opposing enchantments, and also a creature we can maybe get back from the graveyard. Then the next category is the Sacrifice Fodder. These are mostly creatures we're happy to sacrifice and maybe get back from the graveyard to enable our various synergies. All State of Life's Bounty can also be used to protect one of our creatures. We've got a Dauntless Bodyguard can also give one of our creatures indestructible if we play this afterwards and can also be sacrificed at any point. So it can also potentially enable our Sadistic Pilgrim at instant speed to drain the opponent for one. We've got the Selfless Savior can also give one of our creatures indestructible. And then the Doomed Traveler will leave behind a 1-1 Spirit token. Garrison Cat makes a 1-1 Soldier token. Hunted Witness makes a 1-1 Lifelinking token. And then there's also the Nested Shambler that makes a tapped Squirrel token equal to the Shambler's power. So a ton of ways to keep making tokens after our creatures die. So we have more ways to sacrifice our creatures for value. And then there's the Curse Bound Witch, which will let us draft a card from its spellbook when it dies. And that also includes some cool sacrifice synergies. And then next up there's Serrated Scorpion, drains the opponent for two when it dies, gaining two life. There's Shambling Gas, which can give a creature minus one minus one or make a treasure token. We've got Spirited Companion, which draws when it enters. And then a Jadar can every turn make a 2-2 Decayed Zombie token for us to sacrifice. Reassembling Skeleton we can keep bringing back from the graveyard over and over. And then a Ranger Captain can find any of our 1-drops when it enters. Can also be sacrificed itself to prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells for a turn. And then a Woe Strider can also make a Goat token when it enters, and can also let us sacrifice creatures at instant speed to Scry 1, can later be escaped from the graveyard. Then we've got some payoff cards for draining the opponent, in addition to Sadistic Pilgrim and draining for one whenever a creature dies. We also have Blood Artist, which does the same, also applies to opposing creatures. Cruel Celebrant only counts our creatures on a 1-2. Got Flesh Taker, which lets us gain one life and scry one whenever we sacrifice another creature, and can activate it to give it plus two plus two by sacrificing a creature. Hidden Stockpile can every turn make a servo token, can also sacrifice our creatures to scry one. There's a Bastion, which will drain the opponent for one when a creature dies, making a 1 1 token when it enters. We've got Taisa, which doubles the death triggers, including the ones from Sadistic Pilgrim, so that can very quickly add up. And the Meathook Massacre also drains the opponent for one when our creatures die. And then we've got some life gain payoff cards, including a Cleric class, which can maybe give us plus one counters if we level it up, and on level three can reanimate one of our creatures. Lunark Veteran can also let us gain life when creatures enter, similar to Soul Warden. And then a Janny's Pride Mate can benefit from it, picking up plus one counters, similar to Hallowed Priest. Voice of the Blessed, one of the better versions of those creatures, as it will eventually gain Vigilance and Flying, maybe even Indestructible if we get to 10 or more counters. Cleric of Life's Bond can also gain life if Clerics enter, and can also slowly pick up one counter each turn. Heliod can also put additional counters whenever we gain life. There's a Veto, which will drain the opponent whenever we gain life, can also give our team a life link until end of turn. There's a Bloodthirsty Aerialist, picking up plus one counters, similar to our other creatures, on a 2-3 flyer this time around. And then a Jani can make an Ajani Pride Mate token with a minus two, can also gain life with a plus one, and the zero ability if we're at 40 or more life in Historic Brawl can also wipe the opponent's board. And then a Witch of the Morse is awesome, as it can make the opponent sacrifice a creature each turn if we gain life, and return a creature from our graveyard to our hand. 
And then the final category are kind of card draw effects and other engines that work well by sacrificing our creatures. We also have Esper Sentinel, which can tax the opponent whenever they cast a non-creature spell early on. Can be very useful. There's a Village Rites as well as a Deadly Dispute to sacrifice a creature and draw two. In the case of Dispute, also make a treasure token. Priest can sacrifice two creatures to make the opponent sacrifice a creature, lose two life. And we also get to draw a card and make double black. Black Market Connections can draw an extra card each turn, make shapeshifters and treasure tokens, and we can easily offset the life loss with a life gain from Pilgrim and the other various life gain creatures. And then there's also Phyrexian Arena, which is very similar, just drawing a card at the cost of one life each turn. Morbid Opportunist gets to draw whenever a creature dies, only triggers once each turn, whereas Midnight Reaper can trigger multiple times each turn at the cost of one life when a non-token creature dies. There's Lurus to recur or cheaper cards from the graveyard every turn. Got a Luminous Broodmoth, which when a creature dies without flying, it returns to the battlefield with a flying counter on it, so we can sacrifice them multiple times. Sarah Paragon also allows us to replay permanents with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard each turn. Got Henrika, which can make each player sacrifice a creature when we play it, maybe draw a card and transform into Infernal Seer. And then Rankle Similar can make each player sacrifice a creature, discard a card, and draw a card at the cost of one life if it manages to connect. And Yogmoth can instantly sacrifice a creature at the cost of one life to draw a card and put a minus one minus one counter somewhere. We've got a Liliana, which passively draws a card whenever a creature dies, can make a zombie token each turn and make each player sacrifice two creatures. And to Rally the Ancestors can bring back all our creatures with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield at instant speed, but we have to exile those creatures at the beginning of the next upkeep, so we gotta make sure to sacrifice those creatures for value before they get exiled so they still end up in our graveyard. And finally, Agadim's Awakening can also bring back creatures with different mana values from our graveyard to the battlefield. And then our mana base includes some utility lands, like the various castles, Arden Veil to make 1-1 tokens, Lochthwain to draw cards, we've got Aiganjo and the Abandoned Mire as channel lands to either remove creatures or get them back. And then we have Frexin Tower, which can sacrifice a creature to add double black to our mana pool, so it can give us a nice mana boost. And then just a ton of mana fixing. The uh, fetch lands also have a bit of synergy with our 4 mana Sarah Paragon, which can bring them back from the graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Minsk and Boo, red-green. And our hand seems okay. Can play a bodyguard on one, and then... Uh, we can end up sacrificing it to Deadly Dispute if we like. Although I might still play Sadistic Pilgrim turn 2, Reaper on 3, and then if we don't draw land, maybe Dispute. If we do, maybe Henrika on 4, so we get to curve out nicely. Opponent with a tap land, and yeah, play Pilgrim, hit for 2. And now we'll be able to curve Reaper into Henrika. Turn to Paradise Druid to ramp out their commander a turn ahead of schedule. Can't quite play Voice unless we want to Deadly Dispute sacking Bodyguard. Then we could still play Voice. Is that worth it? Then I wouldn't necessarily have a creature I'm happy to sacrifice to Henrika. I think Reaper here is fine. Play Reaper attack, I'm fine trading for Paradise Druid. And then next turn Henrika can make them sacrifice a creature as well. Fable on three, okay. We'll probably get rid of the Shaman here if we play Henrika. Each player sacrifices a creature. Goodbye, bodyguard. You've served us well. And then we're still happy to attack. The garrison cat plays well with deadly disputes. Opponent gets to loot. Just discarding a single mountain, so they're happy with their hand. Time for Minsk and Boo. Gets three counters and stays back on defense. Now we also have Igancho, which is only one mana to channel thanks to our two legendary creatures. 
So let's say I play Arcane Signets. Play Garrison Cat so we can Deadly Dispute and then still I Ganjo. We are missing out on some life gain triggers for voice, but so be it. And then I guess we can move to combats. This will draw and lose one life. And then attack all at Minskambu. Could have also potentially transformed Henrika to make sure we kill their commander. But this still seems fine. Get a bunch of triggers. And channel for one. Okay. And then uh, next turn we have a ton of great options. Between Lurus, get back, Dauntless Bodyguard or Garrison Cat. Yogmoth can kill some stuff. And Bastion can start draining the opponent as well. So your opponent back up to 13, carry it, it, make that 14, and they can still activate Timeless Heroes, which will grow the token. Alrighty, land would be nice if we can draw one here. Is there any way we can make that happen? Yogmoth can maybe sacrifice a creature, but this only triggers off non-tokens. Don't quite have the mana for Voice of the Blessed Lurus Bodyguard, but maybe Lurus Bodyguard plus Shambler is good enough. Priest doesn't really do much on this board with her opponent having this many creatures. So yeah, we'll get the Lurus engine going. And Bodyguard protecting Lurus is my guess. Move to combats. Transform. And this can take out the Timeless Heroes, and that's it. And play Shambler. So now with the Shambler, we have more creatures we can sacrifice to Yogmoth as well, to uh, decimate the opponent's board. And we do want to get rid of the Reflection if possible. So they replay Heroes. And what do they take out? Henrika, that's fine. Still get to draw. And Yogmoth can also take out the Karyotid pretty easily. Shambling Ghast also happy to sacrifice. Alright, so we'll kill a whole bunch of mana elves here. Alrighty, Yogmoth. Step one. Sack Shambler. Draw with Midnight Reaper. Fraxin Tower is also kind of exciting. Keep killing creatures. I guess maybe it was worth it to Frexin Tower out the Bastion before sacking more stuff, although then I wouldn't be able to replay anything with Lurus. So, yeah, let's tower, sack the token. And then I can play Shambler once again, Shambling Ghast as well. Can take out Paradise Druid as well. So yeah, everything's gonna die. And then play Shambling Ghast. Can make a treasure with Shambling Ghast as well if I'd like. So I can play another one drop. 
And we've got a pretty full grip here as well. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing five color slivers. Our hand does not seem like a keep with uh, no white mana. This is better. So Pilgrim on two, Voice on three, and then Skeleton good with a Flesh Taker as we can sacrifice it over and over. And uh, I'm wondering if I want to play Cat on one or keep it to trigger Pilgrim. Although I wouldn't be able to play it alongside Voice turn three since we need black mana in play. So it's probably fine to play it now. Opponent ramping with Explore. Thank for one. And yeah, hoping for maybe a card draw engine here to make sure we can keep uh, cycling through the deck. Some removal could help. As our opponent's ready to cast our Sliver next turn. Okay, Lurus has potential. I think I still like voice first, since we don't have anything to get back. And then a large voice could help out. But for now we're gonna see Sliver cascading. Presumably. And they might have some mana left over to cast another Sliver afterwards. Pretty big mana disparity. So we'll see if our opponent can uh, turn that into a win. It's going to be Sliver cascading into Harrow. So more ramp at the point where they probably prefer to just find some creatures. The lands come into play untapped, so it does allow them to maybe cast another creature afterwards. And there's a Blur Sliver for haste. Yeah, that's one of the scarier ones. What does it find? The Spark does not have any targets, luckily, so dodge the bullet there. Blur Sliver itself we can block, first Sliver we cannot, so take seven. All right, Ranger Captain, I don't think there's any one drops I really need here. Don't have Giant Killer, for instance, to kill Sliver, so I think I'm better off going Flash Taker Skeleton and grow a voice twice. And then Skeleton we're happy to chump with if needed. Do I trade Pilgrim for Blur Sliver is a question. They might not even take the trade. And if they do trade I can put Pilgrim in Graveyard to get it back with Lurus. So I think it's fine to attack. Keep Garrison Cat back as an extra chump blocker if necessary. Although I suppose keeping the Death Toucher back could also discourage some attacks. So find balance here between offense and defense. Mirari's Wake can generate a lot of mana and an escape to find more slivers. They also found some removal with uh, Maelstrom Pulse, but this turn seems finished. Okay, so next turn's gonna be scary. For now, I guess I could play a Ranger Captain to prevent him from casting Pulse and Signet in the first place. And then... We can fly over with Voice of the Blessed. What else can I do here? I guess play a Pride Mate to start growing it, unless there's a one drop I really need. Although I can't really think of anything. So yeah, we'll play Pride Mate. Plus Ranger Captain. And then... Which one drop do we like? The Alsate could maybe help us set up a lethal attack. Scorpion can also drain the opponent. Selfless Savior is always useful. So we definitely have some good options. Let's go with the Alsate. And then hit for 7 plus Pilgrim can attack. And then we'll sacrifice Ranger Captain in the opponent's upkeep. And hopefully Voice of the Bless can cross the finish line. And 
land we can keep. And yeah, if two of our creatures die, then Pilgrim will also be able to kill our opponent, so... We'll see if our opponent can kill us without killing two of our creatures. A Realm Walker, step one. Cascades into Diffusion Sliver for protection. If they can find the sliver that grants flying, that would be quite effective. The Predatory Sliver probably finds the one giving first strike. It's going to be a mana left off the top, probably finding the first strike sliver. Nope. So try again. And there it is, striking sliver for first strike. And they do also have a lot of hasty mana, thanks to blur sliver and mana weft. But they can't cast any non-creature spells because of ranger captain, so no pulse or signet, so one unknown left. Plus whatever's on top with Realm Walker. Opponent attacks. And yeah, we can easily block, survive the attack, and then finish them off with our Pilgrim triggers. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing an IV deck, which is always incredibly scary. Our hand does not have any cheap removal, which may be cause for a mulligan. But it can beat down pretty hard with Cleric and Priest both growing whenever we gain life. And then both Cleric and Pilgrim can gain us life. Yeah, it might be worth a try. And then ideally find a 1 mana life gain enabler. So we can curve out even better. Veto could also be a payoff, but yeah, it's all about having the mana to cast all these spells in time. So turn two, I'm guessing Cleric over Pilgrim, since this will gain life off uh, Cleric's entering, which includes the Pilgrim itself. Could play Veto here as well. Opponent playing Pixie, so lots of mana from the opponents. Yeah, I guess Veto would be the more mana efficient play. And then next turn I can go Pilgrim plus Priest. And start draining the opponent with Veto. But yeah, opponents could access to a ton of mana here. So Ivy could uh, take over Transformation. Shuts down Veto. At least they weren't able to target our commander with it. And Arcane Signet. Does Signet change anything? Could go Signet plus Airy List. Although I kind of feel like I still prefer Pilgrim here. A Rankle was also an option. Well, the opponent does have Counterspell mana available, plus it could have all sorts of pump spells to maybe ambush our attacker. Now we've got a 4-4, probably more likely to have a decent attack. Although it could honestly still wait, since our opponent did keep the Pixie back on defense for a reason. Yeah, maybe I should just wait. And then next turn go Signet Aerialist, which will grow quite large. Or maybe just attack with Veto, which we care about less if it dies. Opponent takes it. Three cards in hand, so what's it gonna be? Rune of Flight, we'll draw two. So that's a good start. They control Artifact and Enchantment for Reliquary as well, to draw two at any point. Heron will also draw. Okay. So any more mutate creatures are going to be a problem for sure. Opponent stays back. So yes, yeah, Signet plus Aerialist I think is still the move. Boom. 
bunch of triggers. And then, uh, yeah, I might have to be a little bit more aggressive now. Although an instant speed pump spell is still kind of a blowout, since they can uh, potentially grow two creatures at once. So maybe just Pilgrim attacks. Opponent falls to 16. Champion will also draw a ton of cards if they have more runes. Or various enchantments and a Curious Obsession. We'll uh, draw two cards right away, plus two more if they attack. So we're in a lot of trouble. Just one Heron attacking to play it safe. Yeah, Rankle's not looking great. Liliana minus two could still be reasonable, although they can sack an Ornithopter pretty easily. Hidden stockpile. What does that do for us? Not a whole lot. Probably stick to companion first. See what we draw. Yeah, maybe if Vito wasn't transformed, we might have been able to get there with all these life gain triggers. Bastion as well. Our opponent does still have a mine available with Ornithopter, which could represent a pump spell. So, what do I attack with? If it's just plus one plus one, or hexproof, that's fine. If it's a plus two pump spell, that becomes more of a problem. But I think I'm slowly running out of time here. So attack with all except Vito, or maybe even Vito as well, if they do try and set up a double block. And Ranger Scale for plus one plus one. Yep. Yeah. So those just bounce. And those just bounce, so at least they didn't kill anything. Opponent falls to five. All right, let's see if they can uh, kill us here. If we get to untap, we can do some serious damage with uh, Liliana sacrificing creatures with a Bastion out. Opponent's ramping with Greathorn, draws with Heron. But at five life, if they can take an extra turn here, I don't know if they'll be able to attack to draw with that Curious Obsession, and if they don't, it will fall off. Another enchantment, okay. Zero points committed. Could easily die to the uh, three mana aura, pumping for each enchantment. Ancestral Mask. Another mutate creature, like the Shore Shark, to bounce would be quite effective too. It's gonna be a Vine Mare. Opponent still has one mana available. And yeah, Curious Obsession falls off and our opponent concedes. It's a bit of an anticlimactic game, opponent going off, but yeah, the life drain added up and we had some large creatures to take over the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ishin, two heavens as one. So Mardu attacking deck, and my hand seems fine. Turn one Sentinel, even though our opponent's mostly going to be playing creatures, still quite effective. And then Swords as a one-mana removal spell is great. Turn two Pilgrim, or we could play Cleric of Lives Bond first. Although the plan is Strider on the following turn. I guess we don't have the mana to. So yeah, then Cleric makes more sense since it'll hit for one more. And then we can uh, fetch with a storefront. Okay, play this to grow Cleric. 
And they've got Infernal Grasp, which at least draws with Sentinel. And attack for one. Fetching a Plains, I think. Suppose I could have waited until playing Cleric Class to gain two off Storefront. Doesn't make a huge difference here. And once again, Sentinel draws off Fable. So we could exile the token. Could wait for them to play their commander and then exile the token. And for now, what's my plan? Could play a Woe Strider. Keep up Swords. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Or could go Celebrant plus Scorpion. Let's go with a Wistrider. And then I don't think I offered a trade. Opponent gets to loot. Because, yeah, the Shaman would make two treasures with their commander, so they're kind of incentivized to play that first. Yep, so exile the Shaman, which will take away a lot of the momentum from this turn and enough for the opponent to concede. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Bladewing the Risen, Black Rat, Dragon Reanimator. Our hands could use white mana and uh, just more lands in general. Don't think I can keep. This is better. Turn one Esper Sentinel, turn two can go Signet plus Witness, or just play our Pilgrim. And then Tower also, good combo with Sarah Paragon. Can make more mana by sacking a Witness and then replay it. So our opponent's probably looking to cast some looting effects to discard their dragons to then bring back. Probably going to see some ramp spells as well. For now, we're ramping ourselves with Tower and Signet in a way. Could use some more card draw. Opponent's got their own Signet, but we get to draw off Sentinel. Feels nice. Alright, Pilgrim plus Jadar might be the move here. No need to show them Phyrexian Tower yet. And then sacrificing the zombie to towers also. Pretty good value. But we'll see here. Bone could have a sweeper. Which will decimate our board, but then Paragon can rebuild. Right, for now, just a Blood Chief's Thirst. Opponent pays attacks. Shadar down. But next turn, I can replay it with Paragon. And an Old Priest, just a 2 1 lifelink. Okay, so now play Tower. And then sacrifice Zombie Token, I think, to replay Jadar with Paragon. And we can attack with Hunt and Witness. And that's probably it. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Braid's Arisen Nightmare. So a black sacrifice deck up against our black-white paper cuts. And the Rally the Ancestors in particular should be quite effective. So should be a relatively good matchup for us if things go according to plan. Opponent's going to make a sacrifice creatures and we're just going to bring them back. For now, Cold Seal Heart, and then next turn we can double spell. I guess I could also sacrifice other card types which we don't control. Thieves' Tools makes a treasure, so that's something they might sacrifice to Braids. So for now. I guess we have Cathar Commander, which can also blow up artifacts, but doesn't seem like a priority. So player commander. And then I can either keep a village rights or play skeleton. 
in case they try and kill our creature, we can get some value. I guess we can also flash in Commando if they don't make us village rights, so that's still efficient. So there's Braids. Probably sacrifices the treasure token, and then I could get rid of Cold Steel Heart. Don't think that's worth it. We'll just let them draw. And uh, take it from there. And play Commando. Okay, so for now, play Skeleton, sack it to Village Rites, see what we get. Could use some life gain payoff cards. And then end of turn we can bring back Skeleton. Alright, Taisa could also be exciting. So... Let's attack with Commando and Pilgrim. Fine with the trade. Okay. And I think we let Pilgrim go to the graveyard since we have Rally to bring it back. Aha, opponent's got a Malachi Rebirth. Fair enough. I guess I should bring back Skeleton now. Get an extra life. And I guess we'll still move Pilgrim back to the command zone. Might be a while before I cast a rally. And we have quite a bit of mana to replay it. Bujuka Bog Exiles Graveyard, so would have ended up in the command zone anyways. At least the skeleton is safe. Bastion makes a token. And yeah, we're happy to sacrifice skeleton to braids. So they're probably out of lands in hand if they played Bog before trying to maybe exile Skeleton. Ooh, Castle Lockthwain is exciting too. Think we replay Pilgrim and then Skeleton as well. Commando can blow up Bastion eventually. For now just hit for three. And yeah, we can get the Skeleton back at instant speed, so... No need to make a move. Stronghold can eventually give them a mana boost. Now I'm happy enough sacking Cold Steel Heart. Their Fleet Hoarder can be sacrificed and leave behind a treasure. So that also works well with Braids. So now the question is, do I blow up their Bastion? Also then, I guess I want Skeleton in play, so I'll bring back Skeleton instead. Opponent gets to drain me with Bastion. But we can uh, sacrifice Skeleton here. So the opponent doesn't get to draw, and in fact they declined. Rites is awesome here, can use it multiple times. And if I play Taisa first, we get to trigger Pilgrim multiple times as well. So we'll give that a try. And then still have our castle to pull ahead. So right, take out Braids. Blowing up a Skeleton. Double triggers. And Village Rides will sack Braids in response. Fair enough. Maybe I should have uh, blown up the Bastion, but that's okay. If I move to combat, what happens? Do I want to trade for Hoarder? Not particularly. I guess I just pass with a plan of sacking Commando. Fan Lurker, ooh, that's a good one. Gets my Rally. Although it's not like we were really abusing the rally here with only Commando coming back. So, yep, yeah, rally down. And 
and Ophiomancer to make some snake tokens, which they can also repeatedly sacrifice. So the board is getting kind of stalled. I really need some card draw to synergize with Tessa. But I guess we have a life total advantage going for us. Right, let's blow up Bastion, since that's just gonna drain us over time. And then we can start using Castle as a mana sink, and the Meatog Massacre is not bad either. Do we want to pull the trigger on that one? Leaving Taisa in play. Losing Soul Warden and Pilgrims kind of sad. So maybe I do still wait on it for a turn. Although another discard creature could maybe empty out my hands and make me lose Massacre. Yeah, in that case, I guess we'll Massacre and then uh, cast it now for X equals 2. And then I can bring back Skeleton. Back to the command zone we go. Opponent's at 6. So the double massacre trigger is also adding up with Taisa. Might have been worth it to let her skeleton die just to drain the opponent for 2. It's gonna be a Liliana, but skeleton protects Taisa. No cards in hand either, so not particularly effective. I guess I could have removal in hand to kill our creature and make a sacrifice, but no. It just drains them for two. Two cards in hand. And aha, uh -huh, Invoke Despair. It's pretty good, gets rid of the Massacre too. But not before draining the opponent down to two. So can we figure out a way to kill them here? If I play Pilgrim... One mana left, that doesn't do much. So I think the move here is just play a land, pass, and then draw with Castle. Take it from there. No point in getting rid of Liliana. Can maybe do that next turn with the rights. And if I draw with Castle, I'll only have three mana left, so unlikely to cast anything too impactful. Which uh, they may otherwise make us discard with Liliana if we draw four drop. Let's see if we can find a couple more points of damage. They could sacrifice Liliana, I suppose. Is that part of the types it is? Skyclave Relic. So we'll go to end step, put on not activating Liliana. And I'll uh, activate Castle, bring back Skeleton. And a Flesh Taker could come in handy. Alright, put on sacking Liliana to draw. So now what's the move? Can get my opponent to one pretty easily. Can I kill them? So good play Pilgrim and Flesh Taker and pass. And then Flesh Taker sacrificing Skeleton also puts my opponent to one. And then next turn I can kill them. So opponent making extra mana with Stronghold, draws with Mindstone. And a Treasure's Blessing, that's going to put them in a pretty tight spot, as they have to pay a life to cast spells. So that's probably game over, but we'll see here. I guess they can sack the Blessing to Braids and still cast an instant. But nope, opponent packs it in, awesome. 
So yeah, got to see our black-white pilgrim deck in action. And yeah, getting all those paper cuts going is incredibly satisfying if you can drain the opponent to death one point at a time. So pretty fun deck if you like these aristocrat style of decks. And I think the Pilgrim makes for an awesome commander, probably better than some of the more expensive options like Tesa, even though she can be a ton of fun too. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.